Man, I was just uh, excited, you know, I was just happy. I mean, just, it was kind of like a breath of fresh air, kind of like almost, if there was one word, I would just say finally, you know, finally. You know, I, uh, when I signed with Bellator, I knew I had a couple couple quick fights, and then the tournament, and then the shot with Alvarez. That was, that was the, you know, the goal, and it was going to take a, a whole year to come to fruition, and, you know, I worked really hard in that time at Extreme Couture, and, uh, you know, at, at that point, it was just like, finally, you know, get this belt on me, let's go, and I just want to go hang out with my family and friends. Uh, it was in Florida, and I had like 20 or 30 people there with me, so I was just excited to go hang out with them. No, I, I definitely needed that, you know, it was definitely a, a maturation process for sure. I mean, to be able to get, it was five, you know, five fights before Alvarez, man. I, I was a baby. I was, uh, you know, I was new to the sport whenever I fought Alvarez, let alone if I hadn't had those five fights to leading up to that, you know. So, I, uh, you know, it was good, it was good to have those, if you want to call them, you know, tune-up fights before the, the Alvarez fight and, and none of them by any means were easy you know uh, my first two were pretty quick finishes I almost got my then I got my leg rip almost ripped off by Marcin Held then I had my first decision which was probably the one of my toughest fights to date against Lloyd Woodard and then uh, and then Patricky Pitbull so it was a tough little run uh, a run in which you know Lloyd Woodard and Patricky Pitbull both had a lot of momentum they were both you know I think Lloyd Woodard me and Lloyd Woodard were kind of Real, real close, almost even as far as odds go. But Patricky Pitbull was definitely the fa favorite, so it was good to go in and get the win against a guy who had been knocking people out like like Pitbull had, and um, and then get the opportunity to fight a top guy, top five guy in the world like Alvarez, and it worked out well. And I'm glad it's uh, I'm glad it all worked out how it did. Yeah, you know, I think you know when I look at my career, I, I kind of look at pre and post Alvarez fight you know it's I mean that was the fight that really put me on the map that was a fight that I proved to not only myself but I think hopefully to the whole world that you know I'm not to be taken lightly and I'm in, the, I'm in this sport to be the best you know and and I'm gonna be really hard to finish uh, so you know since the Alvarez fight I mean going in against a, a veteran like Gono uh, we went in and we finished him in you know less than a minute which didn't really show me much about my about myself besides you know the fact that I was able to get a dominant win and uh, you know, and then going into the, the Han fight, it had been, you know, over a year since I'd only fought one minute in that whole year. So it was definitely going to be a test. It was definitely going to be a gut check. You know, it was definitely going to be, you know, what, am I going to be able to silence the critics and silence the people who were talking about ring rust and that kind of stuff. And I think we did that. I think I, I, you know, I sent a message and it was a good fight. Han is a great competitor and I was, I was prepared for a 25 minute war and it just so happened that it ended up being a lot less than that. So that's good. And, it's happy to be on Spike, happy to be on that first show, and it was, a, it was a very, very good night on Spike TV, January 17th. I, I do take this sport so seriously, and I do do everything necessary to become the best in the world, and I do surround myself with the right people, and I do do the right things, and I do work hard, and I do you know, try to become the best man I possibly can be, and when you're doing that kind of stuff, it kind of takes all the pressure off of yourself because you know that you've done everything that you possibly could to be successful that night. Whenever you step in the cage, there's going to be a thousand ways to win and a thousand ways to lose. And, you know, there's a lot on the line and there's a lot of uncertainty that's about to happen. So as long as you're okay with that, you know, you just take it and you, that cage door closes and you just let your coaching, you know, you let your coaches coach you and you let your training take over and you, you know, you just kind of flow. So I knew I was going to compete at a high level. I knew I was going to, you know, I knew I was going to do well. I knew I was going to win. Just, you know, flat out, I knew I was going to win. I just didn't know how or how dominantly or how quick, if it was going to be a finish or if it wasn't going to be. Uh, but like I said, when you do everything right, there should be no doubt in your mind that you're going to go out there and, and do well for yourself and get a win. And by doing that, you're automatically going to please Spike. You're going to please Bellator and you're going to please the fans. And, you know, ultimately that's, it's all, it all goes hand in hand. You do the right thing, you're going to be great. You'd be great. Promotion, Spike TV, your family, friends, God, everyone's going to love you. So you're good. You know, it's, I mean, it's just sad. It's sad and it literally blows me away. You know, like, you know, it was just, we were just talking about it. It's like, it almost seems like wrestling would be the absolute last sport on the list that they would ever cut. You know, it's, it's such an old sport. It's been around forever. It's referenced in the Bible. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, 
it's just crazy. Uh, but now that now that the announcement has been made, hopefully it has you know lit a fire under all the wrestling communities behind. You know, and and now we we finally realize that. Maybe we've been slacking a little bit. Maybe it is up to us. It is up to us to spread awareness. It is up for, up to me to be, you know, talking to to people about it. To, to really realize that the sport that I love, the sport that has made me the man I am today, the sport that, you know, has made me, has turned me into the the fighter I am today. I, I know I wouldn't be sitting here without the sport of wrestling and without the coaches and, and wrestling uh, teammates that I've had in the past. I wouldn't be sitting here without them. So, for me to, for me to, you know take a step back and realize you know that sport could be gone and my sons and my daughters or whoever they're my, my little cousins and, and all, all the kids that I've coached along the way the kids that I've you know my last wrestling camp was able to show moves to and stuff if they wanted to be an Olympic champion you know they don't they won't have that opportunity you know whenever they get of age so it's it's just crazy and it's it's uh it's one of those things man where I hope you know if I had if I had a million dollars right now I would be I'd be pumping some money into the sport, doing something, raising awareness, doing something, and I think it's it's going to take us, you know, as a wrestling community, to kind of, you know, stick together, put our heads together, and you know, figure something out. Uh, I answer I answer this question always the same, man. However, however everybody else sees me, you know, I I see myself as, you know who I am and a guy who's got a ton left to learn, a ton a ton more work to do and a ton more fights to win, you know. Uh, and that's really all I can I can control. I can't control, you know, can't control where they put me in the rankings. I can't control, you know, much besides the fact that it's up to me to get my butt back in the gym, get better, um, become the best fighter I possibly can be and make the right decisions, surround myself with the right people and, you know, good things are going to happen. So, you know, I, uh, it's it's awesome to be to be like you said widely considered you know inside the top ten man it's uh it's an honor and it's it's just a really humbling experience to know that you know since I started fighting that was my goal that you know be put on a platform and win fights and, and do well and I'm doing well and like I said man I was put in the sport for a reason and and I know that if I make the right decisions I'm gonna be the best lightweight in the world and there's no doubt about that so I just can't wait to get there and like I said. I got a ton, of, ton more work to do, and just excited to, you know, I get excited about all the hard work I have in front of me. I know how many hours and hours and hours I have left in the gym, and you know how many grueling workouts and weight cuts and and times that I literally, you know, dislike but love at the same time because it's it's all so worth it. So just have a ton of work to do, and just can't wait to continue on this journey. Uh, right now, I'm focused on Marcin Held, Dave Jansen. Uh, Marcin Held, like I said, almost ripped my leg off, you know, a while ago. So, um, whoever wins that fight, I'll fight, obviously. But I, I'd like to see Dave Jansen win, just because I haven't fought him yet. It'd be nice to have a win over, you know, a, a new opponent rather than Marcin Held again. Uh, waiting for the call, man. I uh, Spike has just been wonderful. Uh, they've been doing so so many great things for me. We're up here up here in New York doing some stuff. We got an MMA Expo tomorrow, man. So it's just they're doing some awesome things with me, keeping me busy, getting me out there. So. You know, I can't say enough about them, and I'm uh, I'm excited to to continue to train, and, and hopefully, uh, I'm guessing sometime this summer, you know, and then have another fight in the in the winter time. So get two more fights in this year, two more dominant performances, two more dominant wins for the fans, and you know, be 13 to 0 at the end of 2013.